The sheer level of cringe from these people never ceases to amaze me. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about some super cringy material coming from MS13 DNC, I mean MSNBC. Now, apparently this anchor went on there and remixed some rap lyrics from Biggie Smalls from back in the 90s to, I guess, be kind of edgy, be kind of cringy on purpose. That's probably part of his whole shtick is being weird, being cringy, being kind of the the straight edge comedy guy, like the rather than being zany and slapsticky, he has a straight face the entire time while making jokes. That might be his whole thing. I don't really know, but I digress. The whole point is that this was really ridiculous and I'm not sure what the purpose is. Is it just to gain clicks and views from being cringy or is it to push a certain political narrative or maybe both? Maybe you're able to kill two birds with one stone. Now, before I continue, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you're going to see and hear what the guy on MS-13 DNC said. After we get done with that, I'll talk about what he said there. Then I'll give you my two cents, my deep detail analysis, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. COVID's dangerous. It's lethal. It's a bit like the beef Notorious B.I.G. used to rap about when he said beef is when your moms ain't safe up in the streets. Beef is when I see you guaranteed to be in ICU. Well, when COVID sees you, you can end up in ICU, maybe not at the same rate as Biggie's beef. But that's the point about risk. You don't want to test these streets and risk ending up in the ICU. All right, you saw that, you heard that. Now, I don't think I disappointed you as far as the cringe anticipation because that was really crazy. I know that song obviously very well from back in the 90s, What's Beef? Um, you know, I've, I've heard that quite a few times. I did not really enjoy that rendition. I did not enjoy that remix to it. But I think the target audience is not me. I, I don't think I'm the kind of guy that he's trying to rap and impress. I'm not an MS-13 DNC watcher. I'm just not really into it. He's trying to impress a lot of the um, the, 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 the white, 80% white liberal, a few black and other types of liberals that watch MSNBC, that enjoy MSNBC. People that watch that and enjoy that probably are going to play that song, the original version, uncensored, in their car with two masks on by themselves on the way to their job. That is probably who he's trying to target with this. So, yeah, I, I didn't enjoy it too much. It was really cringy. But some people might enjoy that kind of cringe. And they're going to really buy into what's being said. Now, that's the bigger issue. What is he even talking about? Aside from being cringy, aside from that, how about the substance of the actual short clip? Talking about ICUs being filled up and it's going to get you, first of all, what are the chances of you going to an ICU after being exposed to this thing? Like, okay, how about this? What are your chances of being exposed to the thing, number one? Number two, what are your chances of getting sick? And number three, what are your chances of going to the ICU and getting put on the vent at this particular point in time? You got all kind of things out there you can do to prevent yourself from going to the hospital. Like, I don't know, exercise. Haven't they said like 75% of those who are in the hospital, in the ICU with this particular bug are obese? I mean, if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. But I think I believe that I saw that study somewhere. And if I can find that, I'll place that in the box, maybe even on the screen. But maybe rather than giving me this, this scare tactic, talking about you might end up dying like Biggie did in the 90s from... Uh, you know, gang related type violence, maybe rather than trying to scare me, how about talk about ways I could prevent myself from being in a situation? Don't just say, all right, take the shot. That's a wrap. How about telling me ways I can improve my health and prevent catching this thing and prevent going to the hospital? Just maybe you do that. I, I would presume that the people that watch MSNBC are a little bit educated. I'm not saying they're necessarily rocket scientists, 
but they're probably educated. A lot of them are liberal and a lot of them already have the shot. Now, for those who are vaccine hesitant, which was what this whole thing was about, for those who are vaccine hesitant, and if you're watching the news and you're a religious news watcher, you're probably a little bit educated. So it might take a little bit more than rap lyrics to get through. And if they're trying to get through to people to convince them, rather like aside from just getting the clicks and all that kind of stuff from their general watchers by being cringy and kind of having a little bit of comedy in there, aside from that, they're also trying to convince some people. Now, if you know that most people who are vaccine hesitant are going to be blacks and Hispanics, probably blacks are the most vaccine hesitant. What is it like 75% of black New Yorkers between the ages of 18 and 44 don't have the vaccine. If you know that is your target group and you're trying to put out rap lyrics to convince them to go get it, to scare them to go get it. I mean, what are we going to call that? Is, is that considered racist? I mean, I'm not sure if it's racist or not, but I, what I will tell you is that it's lazy. It's kind of stereotypical. You think because black folks are vaccine hesitant, you're going to put out some rap lyrics and that'll convince them. If I'm watching the news and I watch it regularly, maybe it'll take a little bit more than a rap song to get me to change my mind. Just maybe, just maybe. How about you go get some guys, some medical professionals that are not just bought and paid for by, you know, by, by television, not these ridiculous White House shows, get some real doctors in the field, bring them on there and talk about things in the really frank and direct way. Why we should trust the federales when we know that they have done things in the past that have harmed people, not just Tuskegee, which was an egregious thing that only ended in the 1970s, not just that, but plenty of other shots that were Provera and other kind of vaccines that the military got, like the anthrax thing, which caused a lot of problems. You know, you see all these late night TV commercials if you took X, Y, and Z drug or you're part of X, Y, and Z medical trial, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Call this number to be part of a class action lawsuit. We see these things happen all the time. We see all these commercials. So rather than trying to, you know, rap me to death, how about you just give me some real information and let me just marinate on that, right? Talk about how the NIH director came out on TV and said that, after eight months, your shot is pretty much not going to work anymore. Don't take my word for it. Listen to him for yourself. The NIH director today. Vaccine protection does gradually wane over time. In the Israeli data, the people who got immunized in January are the ones that are now having more breakthrough cases. That's the same thing we're starting to see in the U.S. data. So if you want to convince me to not be hesitant, if you want to convince me to go out here and get this thing for the quote unquote greater good, if you want to convince me of that, go about it in the real way. The the, the rap songs and uh, trying to do what Chuck Schumer did, going out and, and, and rapping in front of a crowd, talking about some, hey, Chuck, you got bars? With your, with your polo shirt tucked in like you about to go to, like, like you about to go um uh, work in a cubicle somewhere on stage trying to rap rather than doing stuff like that. Give me some real information. Don't treat me like I just, all, all, all that really matters to me is rap music and Instagram and stuff like that. If I'm really going to be educated, if I'm really going to be in tune with what's happening, you're not going to be able to convince me using that method. Now, I don't know. Maybe they think from their market research that it does work. But I'm here to tell you right now, if you're watching MS-13, DNC, CNN, ABC, et cetera, uh, bringing out Lil Baby, Lil XYZ, random one, two, three rapper, um, remixing some old lyrics in a really cringy way with some random white man on TV is not going to work. It's not. And you're trying to do all these mandates and all kinds of stuff like that. All you're doing right at that point is creating Jim Crow Society 2.0. So if you want to be the party of racial reconciliation, you want to be the party of uh, inclusion and all this and that, you want to be the big tent party, Democrat party, then maybe don't do things like this. But you know what? As I close, I'm going to say this. How about I don't give you guys on the left any kind of advice? How about I don't do that? How about I let you guys just self-destruct? 
That's fine because when you guys self-destruct, I think we're going to have more eyes on the right. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to join the right or is going to be conservative that was once over there on the left, but I think we'll at least, we'll at least get a bunch more eyes on us rather than on you because maybe at a certain point, these rap lyrics and these exclusionary measures you're trying to go through with vaccine passports, maybe that'll open up some eyes and wake up some sleeping people to what's happening on that particular side of the aisle, and they'll go to the other side or at least look at the other side. They might peek in the other side's window rather than being stuck right there on the left forever. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about those cringy rap lyrics? Did that convince you to go out there and get the shot if you've not gotten the shot already? Um, whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. That was that was so dumb, but it's typical of the left. This is what they do. I mean, this is how they think about you. If you are, you know, a quote unquote minority, they think, oh, all we got to do is just, you know, put a few rat lyrics out there, scare them, and then they go out there and get it. Um, they've been trying to do that, and it's not worked. Remember the the Run DMC? Or I, I might have just been DMC, pardon me. I don't think Run was involved. Remember the, 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 the DMC song that was sponsored by New York? Uh, did, did that work too well? I, I'm not really sure. I think that whenever we see stuff like this, those of us that have a brain and we are kind of hesitant to go out there and get this, we're thinking, man, that's that's not going to work. That's not going to do it. And it's not worked. And they are just repeating the same old failed things. For what? I'm not really sure. Maybe it's a grift. Maybe it's a money grab. But it's not working in reality. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And as all I got to say for this video, if you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.